let's get into these 49ers. The 49ers, do you get the feeling in hindsight, obviously, it's much easier to say this in hindsight after a loss, but do you get the feeling that the 49ers were just feeling themselves a little too much going into this game? I think that's a, a, a huge possibility. Um, yeah, I mean, and I think it's hard not to when you win five games in a row or 15 in a row, honestly. So you start feeling yourself. I mean, obviously they lost to the Eagles, but they don't really count that one. Fan base doesn't really count that one. So for the 49ers, they won 15 in a row. I feel like, uh, you know, it's hard not to. So I kind of understand it. But yeah, maybe that was the reality, right? Like, you know, I had a pinned tweet from from uh, Debo. He's on, you know, to sound like Grover talking about, uh, uh, you know, the 49ers look real good right now, like, in a, you know, over and over again. And, you know, they're feeling themselves. And it's understandable uh, why they were. But I think this, in the long run, this loss could be a good thing because, you know, everybody needs a little bit of humility and they got to know that they uh, um, can be beat. Yeah, I definitely think they were feeling themselves. And I don't even think that they shouldn't have been feeling themselves. I mean, they just beat the brakes off the Dallas Cowboys, who, I mean, we just watched Dallas beat the Chargers yesterday. Not that the Chargers are, are great, but there's certainly some talent over there. And, you know, Dallas is a pretty good football team. But the difference between them and the 49ers on that day in particular was significant. And the 49ers were undefeated. They were scoring over 30 every game. They were holding opponents down to around 13 and a half points per game. Everything was going great. And then they've got a Cleveland team. Yes, on the road, early game, definitely some tough things there. But going against a quarterback that's been on the team for about a week, <laughs> no chub, their best offensive lineman out. It just looked like it was a game they should have won. And really kind of what I point to was the fight before the game where Debo was mocking them. They took exception to it. And then even the final catch of the game, the Jawan Jennings catch, the way he acted when he caught that ball and he, as he went out of bounds, as if they had won the game, mm -hmm. it, it just, you can tell that they were definitely feeling themselves. And I think as a fan base, we were feeling ourselves. I mean, let's keep it a buck. This wasn't just the 49ers. As fans, we were feeling untouchable. We were talking about undefeated seasons. When are the losses going to come? Well, if they happen, it'll be at week 12 through 14. Like, that's a maybe. It, a lot of things happened. Reality is no teams go undefeated. This is not the worst thing in the world. I'd rather get it out of the way now than, you know, worry about it in the playoffs and have that pressure of being undefeated. And I think that everybody on the team kind of needed this. Hey, let's, let's knock, knock it down a peg, get back on track. Remember who we are, know that we're still very, very good, but we can be beat. And so let's play with a sense of urgency, play in and play out. And that might be something that had they not lost, they would have gotten away from, and maybe it would have bit them in the butt at a much more crucial time. Yeah, you don't want to get bitten in the butt. Hey, Jess, I no, do have a I do no have a question for you, brother. Like I, I on the opposite side of the uh the spectrum here. Yeah. You know, Kyle was actually talking like really, you know, not as optimistic as maybe the team thought they were. Do you think because we saw Brock Purdy he struggled a little bit? I think we'll probably talk about it. Um mm -hmm. do you think that that got in his head? The 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 fear maybe like maybe some of the other team was overconfident, but do you think Brock was underconfident going into this game, and maybe that's why he was so off and bothered throughout the game. I don't think so. When I when I look at Brock Purdy play in that game, I didn't I didn't look at a player that wasn't confident in himself. That that was just me. I I just think he was missing throws. Like he just didn't have it. Sometimes sometimes you just show up and and you don't have it. It happens to everybody. The best best players in the world. We can go back to basketball. I mean, as great as Steph Curry is. There are nights that he shows up and shoots six for 24. You know, it's like, well, not his best night, but it happens. Yeah. And it's I not don't. a confidence thing. He doesn't lack confidence. He's probably going to bounce back just fine. But I didn't, yeah. I didn't look at that game as Brock Purdy not being confident. Now, I do want to go to the comments about Shanahan, which initially you'd brought up. That was an interesting approach, you know, that yeah. he tried to bring. And I don't know. Here's the thing. The wording from the announcers 
could be very different than what he was telling his team. The way that I view he was probably telling his team was, hey, yes, last week we blew this team out. We've been blowing all these guys out. But this 30 points a game and and just running away with these games at the end, that don't expect that this week. This team is here to fight. They've got a great defense. The weather's not going to be great. Just be ready for a fight. And if if you blow them out, great. But don't expect to blow them out. Just expect to fight tooth and nail and also expect to win. Like, I don't think there's anything wrong with that when trying to tell your team. And, and, and really what that does tell me is that the answer to this question of the ultimate question, were they feeling themselves? I think Kyle was sensing that they were feeling themselves a little bit too. And as a leader and the coach of this team, he was trying to bring back those expectations. Unfortunately, there's a difference in being told and learning from other people's mistakes and learning from your own mistakes. And I think that's exactly what happened on Sunday. Kyle potentially saw this coming a little bit, not the loss necessarily, but that things aren't always going to be as good as they are. He's been around the league for a long time, coached a lot of good teams, seen those good teams lose to teams that they shouldn't lose to. And he yeah. tried to get his team ready for it. And there was nothing necessarily that he could do to, to prepare them by telling them they had to find out for themselves. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, it makes sense. Yeah. I just pretty was just didn't look like himself to me. And I understand the defense is, you know, phenomenal. I put out the, the statistics on on the defense of the Browns and what they've been able to do. They're only allowing 125 passing yards per game coming into that game. And that's yeah. exactly what Brock got is 125 yards. It's just he just looked off to me even before it started raining. He was just off. And it, it's not what I'm used to seeing from Brock. He's usually more accurate than that. So I was just wondering why. Like, why did you come into this game inaccurate even before it started raining? Um, but yeah, you know, well, and you know. it, I mean, truth be told, it rained in the first half. Like, it, it, the game didn't start with rain. Then there was rain for about, I don't know, a quarter or so. And then there was no rain in the second half. Like, what happened in the second half was not due to rain. It was not raining anymore. So, you know, that, that is not the reason why things happen the way that they did. But again, I, I just, I don't look at it as Brock wasn't confident. I didn't see a player that wasn't confident. That's just me. Maybe somebody saw it different. We'll talk more about Brock Cool. as we go forward. Before cool. we get to this next topic, let me get to Joey Mellons. He says, the pressure of being undefeated has left the chat. 